Okay. Um, the other day we were learning that a woman who got divorced or widowed or the, uh, converted, she needs to wait 92 days before she gets married. Halachically, if a, a, if a man loses his wife and he wants to be married, the halachi is not because of mourning, because after 30 days there's no avelos anymore, but there's a different reason I'll explain in a second. A man is not allowed to remarry somebody else until three chagim go by. That's only if he became a widower. If he divorced his wife, he can marry halachically right away. She has to wait 92 days. But if a, a, a man's wife passed away, he's not allowed to get married for three yom. That's the Allah, it's machlekes in the Megamara, but the Allah has to wait three, three yom tips. Which means that if, let's say, the wife died right before Sukkot, so Sukkot is one, and Pesach is two, and Shavuot is three, right after Shavuot he can get married. But if, let's say, she passed away after Sukkot, then he needs to wait for Pesach and Shavuos and Sukkot, and then he can get married. Getting married, married. The reason for that is, uh, the Gemara says and Halacha says that we don't want him thinking about his first wife when he's with the second wife. So after three Yom Tevim, it basically the Yom Tevim settle, you know, the past, the past, and the future is future. But there are certain exceptions to the rule, and that is, let's say, somebody is, a, a man is old and he needs somebody to take care of him, and there's nobody to take care of him, and he needs a wife to take care of him. Or, Allah says, what happens if there's a bunch of little kids? Now, a woman died very young. There's a bunch of little kids running around the house. He needs somebody <laughs> to, to, to run the house. So those are exceptions to the rule, and then he's allowed to get married earlier. Okay, but otherwise, the Allah needs to wait uh, actually three months. Now there's another din that a lot of people aren't aware of, even though it's a mission in Yavamis. And it's obviously a din shkunach. If a, a woman's husband passed away and she has a child, she's not allowed to remarry until the baby is 24 months. And as we were speaking before, that after a woman becomes a widow, she has to wait 92 days. But if there are kids under the age of two, she has to wait until the baby is two. There are certain opinions today that say 18 months. But in the Gemara, the Mishnah, it says 24 months. What's the reason for that? Because if this woman who's nursing the previous husband's baby, okay, she has a halachic obligation to the first husband to nurse the, his baby. That's one of the obligations of a woman, is to nurse the husband, I mean, their children, which is the husband's child. Now, if a woman is nursing the baby and she gets pregnant while nursing, she might not be able to nurse the baby properly. And then she's actually doing an injustice to the first husband. Or, for that matter, if she's pregnant. Okay? If she's pregnant, she can't get married until the baby is two also. Because again, for the same reason. She's going to have a baby. She won't be able to nurse the baby. Okay? Because she might get pregnant from the second husband. So therefore, the din is, it's called Meinekes Chaveiro, Moberes Chaveiro. She has to wait 24 months. There are many opinions today that say, there's a truth that most you find people agree, disagree, like everything else. Some people say, then nowadays, most women don't nurse more than 18 months. So today, you could be make out 18 months. Which, by the way, is interesting because today, more women are nursing longer than they did in previous years. All the health people, you know, they're nursing uh, when the baby's four years old and five years old and three years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three years old, uh, you know, what? If a woman does not nurse. But it doesn't matter. Again, lay plug, the Chacham did not differentiate between this and that. Like we learned, even a woman who is old and can't have a child anyway, remember the 92 days, she's told the late blue, the chum said this is it, you can't... Uh, what if she cannot support the baby? Huh? What if she cannot support the baby? What do you mean? Bills and this and that. 
So then it's, uh, she has an obligation, then Bezin has to take care of it. I mean Bezin. He has to give her, uh, take care of the kid, like any other orphan that best. No, no, that's it. No, no, no. They just said no, no, no. <laughs> when Terry gives a reason, it's a reason. It's not uh, Boba Mises. What? What did you want? Avi. Okay. Okay, um, next. Okay, I just, these are not so relevant. Um, okay, next thing is like this. This is from the Gemara, and we learn now from Yaakov Avinu. You're not allowed to make two brothers or two sisters get married the same day. Let's say you have two daughters, both got engaged. You want to make a wedding the same day for both of them. It's cheaper. <laughs> or, or it's two boys. So it's interesting. Our meaning is that you can make it, um, or what, then the shail is, um, can you do it even the same week? Can you do it the same week? Because some poskim want to say, you learn it out from Yaakov Avinu, when the Yaakov married Leah, and then he wanted to marry Rachel, that you let love and set them, Malesh was us wait this week, and then you marry her. But some do, some don't. No, not to two brothers marrying two sisters. I'm saying a guy has two daughters. One's marrying Joe Schmo, and the other one's marrying Jack Black. It's just two sisters. Because there's a concept called a Marvin Simcha Besimcha. You're not allowed to mix one Simcha with another Simcha. Two families two, two, two What? They do, what do they do when they're twins? Twins. What do you have the triplets? It's interesting. When you have twins, there was a, one second, there was a hero from the Rebbe. Uh, Rabbi Label Groner had twins, twin boys years ago. Now they're all over the place. Okay, but he had twin boys. And and when he uh, did the bris. So you do both prison. I also have grandkids twins. Okay, so what you do is, the Rebbe told them you should do one bris, say the mimer, make a separation between the two brisen, and then you make the second bris. That you shouldn't do both brisen together, it should be considered a separation between the two. As in separate mamash, the mimer, in adventure, and everything? No, 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 no. Say the mimer. It could be even before the meal. You say the mimer, and then you know. Second, second yeah, you yeah, Just have a break between the two bris. My brother had the triplets. Triplets. Three boys, so three bris. No. So they, they did the first bris, went to the other room, say l'chaim, came back. The second bris went again to the other room, say l'chaim, came back. Okay, that's what I'm saying. To make a break. It is possible. After the third one. After the third one, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but there, there should be, uh, there's also the same reason, in Marvin Simcha Besimcha. So therefore, you make a break between the two to show it separate things. Each one needs its own What? Going back with the nursing lady, a lot of times with her own husband, she gets pregnant while she's nursing. Yeah, but that's the same guy. Right. <laughs> it still takes away. But who's she taking away from? From her husband? He made her pregnant, I hope. So that, it's, it's him. It is. It's, 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 what? I heard that like if somebody that got married in the first week, she's going to somebody else's wedding, even if they don't like this, the other color has to come like to greet her before. No. Not in Armin Hobo. Okay. What? Okay, let's move on. Okay, next thing uh, we'll was learn about chasanis. You know, minig, that's what we're up to anyway in kitchen. Okay, so there's a, there, there's a custom that Ashkenazim are more strict than this than this Fardim, that on the day of the wedding, you fast. The day of the wedding, chasan and kala fast. The Sephardic circles many times are more lenient than for the kala fasting. But the chasan and kala fasts, there's two reasons for this. One reason is because it's their Yom Kippur, the Yom Kippur of the lifetime, besides the day you die, 
So you like you ask Yom Kippur of your lifetime. So therefore, just saying Yom Kippur, you fast. So on the day of the chasen, you fast. That's one reason. Another reason why the chasen, the groom, should fast is because he has to be sober when he gives the ring. So if if he's going to eat, they usually drink wine. They get you know they drink. So therefore, the din is you know that that's a second reason. What's the difference between the two reasons? It's a very interesting thing. The Rebbe was with the, there was a Chabad Chasana that the Kapishna Tzerebbe was there because it was his daughter and the Rebbe was there. Okay? Now, because uh, the Rebbe was inside the Kedushan. So, the Rebbe was talking to the Kapishna Tzerebbe about what happens, the Shaila is, if the Chasana is 12 o'clock noon. Should the chosen continue fasting or not? The difference is these two reasons. If the reason of fasting is because you're going to get drunk, so after the chosen, you did the kedushin already. You couldn't, you couldn't eat and drink. It's, there's no purpose of fasting anymore. If you hold it to Yom Kippur, then you would have to fast. But the pearl, the minig is, if you get married earlier, you don't fast after uh, the chuppah. That's the minig. Is the father of the Father uh, does not have to fast. It's brought down the previous Rebbe fasted on the day of his daughter's weddings. And the Rebbe writes clearly it's not, it's not for everybody. It's not the Rebbe the free Rebbe fasted. There are people that do, there are people that don't. There's no, definitely no obligation to get the, to, for a father to fast. It's the soul of mitzvah, I think. Huh? It's the soul of mitzvah, I think. I understand, but uh, no, until the, until the chasana. Okay, another interesting thing, before we go into this, the question is, what days are good to get married? So certain days, halachically, you're not allowed to get married. What? Tuesday. No, one second. There's certain days, halachically, you're not allowed to get married. Marshall, Yom Tif, you're not allowed to get married, even Cholamayit. Why? The Torah says, on Yom Tif, you have to be happy with the holiday and not with your wife, meaning, Yom Tif, there has to be emphasis on the simcha of, of the Yom Tif, not than anything else. There are certain days, like uh, the custom days, the three weeks, the nine days, uh, the week of Tisha B'Av. I mean, there's certain times that Allah says you're not gonna, you shouldn't get married. Yeah, I mean, again, there's a lot of times which are halachically forbidden, some things are rabbinically forbidden. Shabbat? Shabbat, it's rabbinically forbidden to get married, believe it or not. You're not allowed to, but it's rabbinically forbidden. Because, and Shabbos, I said Shabbos. Shabbos is Shabbos. Metzoi Shabbos is Metzoi Shabbos. Okay? Now, the reason why you can't get married on Shabbos is because you can't acquire things on Shabbos. That's rabbinically forbidden. Why is it rabbinically forbidden to acquire things on Shabbos? Because usually when you acquire things, you write a contract, and you're going to write. So therefore, there's exeda of Mecca, Chumemka, buying and selling on Shabbos. If you think about it, it's not one of the 39 forbidden works in Shabbos. Why can't I buy and sell? Why can't they give you something? You'll pay me after Shabbos. Big deal. Why can't I buy and sell? You're not allowed to buy and sell on Shabbos. Why? It's midrabani, rabbinically, because you might come to write. So therefore... By Kedushin, because, so therefore any type of acquiring is not allowed on Shabbat Sunday. What if you do the acquiring on Friday and the, the, the Sinfah on Shabbat? The Suda, you mean? Yes. There are people that get married Friday afternoon. And then Friday night is the Suda of the Chasana. The Friday Rebbe got married, the Alter Rebbe got married Friday afternoon. But uh, some posts can say you shouldn't do it, but we had a few weddings in the city, too, that I know, that I remember of, the Baba Church. They got married Friday afternoon, and then they had the, the meal. There's no music, obviously, on Shabbos. Huh? Catering. Okay, you can have catering on Shabbos, if they do it right. Anyway, so then, it's brought down in Kabbalah, that certain times, it's not good to get married. I mean, it's not like a... Which, by the way, became revealed from the Rebbe. The Rebbe revealed this. In the free of the Rebbe's times, people got married in all these different types of times. But for instance, there's a thing, that you, don't get, you don't get married in Cheshven. Most months, you only get married in the first half of the month. 
first half of the month. Why the first half of the month? With the exception of Adir and Elul and Kislev, those because they're Mazel Tikka months. But it's late. Some people won't get married. Why? Because up to the 15th day, the moon gets bigger. So it's more Mazel tic. After the 15th day, the moon gets smaller. So it's, the Jews are likened to the moon. So it's still Mazel tic. But in the later years, the Rebbe took off all those barriers. Literally, the Rebbe said, those barriers don't exist anymore. You get married as soon as you can. The sooner the better. Ma'achachin is a 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 ma'ach